Jesus. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 4 read, And it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were Nephilim in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. The word Nephilim is often translated as giants, a legitimate and appropriate interpretation, but one which may only be partially accurate. A better definition might be those who came down, those who descended, or those who were cast down. The Anunnaki of ancient Sumerian texts is similarly described as those who from heaven to earth came. Descending over the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The video is said to be taken over the weekend. Uh, then suddenly the light shoots up into the sky. There you see it. Another video from a different angle uh, appears to show the light doing the same thing. Those clips have gone viral now.
Well, I like to show the stuff now, so can you do it again? Hello? Andrew, yeah, that's my name. Andy, yeah. Can you show yourself as the bright light again? Hi. Rob? <gasps> Neil, where'd you go? Can you show yourself? Gods and goddesses. Only one specific type of godheads empowered by thousands of years, charged with psychic energy from sentient beings in the multiverse, and dwarf nearly all other DMT entities in hyperspace. While these entities are recognizable to an extent as deities from cultures throughout human history, there are just as many that are totally unrecognizable and completely alien. And when compared to their depictions from history, they seem to be more sci-fi than classical, complete with bizarre cyberpunk type attributes. While not always, these entities can take a strong interest in the tripper. Ganesh was searching for immortality. He looked everywhere, gained complete wisdom, uncovered what was hidden. He brought back a tale of times before the Great Flood. He built the Wall of Uruk, which no future king will ever match. Read the story of that man, Gilgamesh, a hero born of Uruk, who went through all kinds of sufferings, who crossed the ocean, the broad seas, as far as the sunrise, who inspected the edges of the world, searching for eternal life. On his travels, Gilgamesh encountered a wise man named Utnanishti, who told him the story of a flood that destroyed the world. That we found structures already described by Gilgamesh, Mr. Fossbinder stated. We covered more than 100 hectares. We found garden structures and field structures as described in the epic, and we found Babylonian houses. Here, predictably, is where the story goes silent due to conflict within the country. It was largely believed the excavations had been halted. However, it seems that the discovery of King Gilgamesh may not have been made in isolation. This footage was supposedly leaked to numerous places across the internet and has largely been put down as authentic footage of the find. Shortly after this was taken, reports state that American forces moved in and seized the find.
Why do the powers that be see fit to suppress such discoveries? The very real tombs of characters long thought to have been mythical. Osiris being but one example among many which have undoubtedly been hidden from the public. Maybe some clues to why his tomb has been hidden lay within the epic and the immense powers Gilgamesh was said to have possessed. He was the fifth king of Uruk, and his power was so mighty, many believe that the stories surrounding him are just myths that were built around his seemingly superhuman strength and endurance. However, serious scholars concluded that the story of Gilgamesh was nothing more than a fairy tale. In the epic, the great Gilgamesh sets out on a quest to find the meaning of life and, finally, some way of defeating death. In doing so, he becomes the first epic hero in world literature. The grief of Gilgamesh and the questions his friend's death evoke resonate with every human being who has wrestled with the meaning of life in the face of death. Is this leaked footage of the tomb of Gilgamesh? Regardless of its authenticity, why all the secrecy? Are we as a species not capable of being presented with things which test our core beliefs without erupting into chaos? miles southeast of Baghdad is an area with historical, historical and religious significance, but the only people who get to see it are American troops. Countries all over the world have took an overwhelming interest in Middle Eastern states. In particular, Iraq has been the place of constant power struggles. Why is that? Some people may be surprised to learn that Iraq was the center of the world for thousands of years. The city of Ur was the very first true city of the world and was central to ancient activity, much like New York City is today. Ur is recorded in written history dating back 6,500 years BC and is even in the Torah, Old Testament. They made many advances, including mass and astronomy, to name a few, and they may have even made alien contact. We know that sounds crazy, guys, but what if it were true? What if we were to tell you that the power struggles in the region surrounding modern-day Iraq is the direct result of the search for ancient technology? What if we were to tell you that a Stargate portal was discovered there in the 1920s and for almost a hundred years, the search has been on for technology that could change the course of human history. Just wait till you guys hear this. In 2003, in direct response to the attacks in New York City, American and British troops invaded Iraq. Within weeks, the two armies crushed the Iraqi army. Mission complete, right? So why did the United States Army stay for over 10 years after liberating the country? Recently, we came across information that strongly suggests that there was a secret objective to the occupation. We are, of course, referring to the oldest known stargate on planet Earth that we know of. At the site of the Great Ziggurat, a British explorer discovered something in the 1920s that is so unbelievable that you could be forgiven for thinking J.K. Rowling dreamed it up. During the 1980s, Saddam Hussein fortified the ancient complex in an apparent attempt to keep out investigators from seeing what was hidden within the complex for thousands of years. Strangely, Hussein put an air force base at this location and even developed chemical weapons here. He was clearly trying to keep this ancient place heavily guarded. The three huge staircases you see in the images were put here under Saddam Hussein's orders. They were to take huge ancient objects out of the Great Ziggurat, but did he succeed? Imagine this scenario. The US government obtains intelligence that hidden somewhere in central Iraq is an actual Stargate, placed there by the Anunnaki gods of ancient Samaria. More and more people are coming forward saying that they have been involved in these classified programs where these technologies are used quite regularly and that they are found all over the planet. Iraq is just one other place that they are found.
I hear you, my brother. Listen, we about to expose the enemy tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. But these Anunnaki, okay, there is something very strange about this picture. If you look at it, you notice the circle. Do you notice that the star in the circle or whatever that is, notice it got like waves. You see the four, four different waves look like they emanating from it. Y'all see it, right? Notice, the, notice this creature got something in his hand. Got something in his hand, like some kind of device, right? Much bigger than the human beings. Y'all see this, right? What was this device and what did it do to people? See, these are the things. It's insane why pastors don't talk about this stuff. We don't got to talk about it every, every time. You know what I'm saying? But to not talk about it, I, I'm sorry. That's disrespectful. Because this is exposing the enemy greatly. Now, I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all this. Look at this right here. Y'all, there's a lag, y'all. So when I'm talking, it might be a little bit of a lag. But just give it a minute. You're going to see it. Why is it America truly invaded Iraq? Huh? Do you know what George Bush... Whatever, um, the youngest one there. Do you know what he said at one point? He was like, uh, I, guess, I guess there was no mass destruction weapons. <laughs> Whoops. Like, wait, what, what? You know how many civilians were murdered? You know how many innocent people died? And you just gonna chuckle it off? Like, <laughs> I guess there was no weapons of mass destruction. But saints of God, what, why is it, right? And um, shout out to uh, Minister Miguel out of Massachusetts. He, uh, he was in the army, the military. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters that are in Christ now that came out of either military or whatever the case be. A lot of y'all know what I'm saying. Brother Miguel, I'll never forget it. He said, bro, because I was talking about this very thing. He said, yo, I could confirm it. He says, in Iraq, they guarded the museums and the whole Anunnaki stuff like it was, some, it was more important than oil to them. Now, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, right? But what is it? What, why is it when they invaded Iraq, one of the first things they did was go check these Anunnaki tablets and all of these things? Huh? You ever ask yourself that question? Right? Why did they do it? Well, hold on. Let's go to the next picture. Listen to this. Y'all see that? This, this look, at, look at how blatant this is. What has he got on his backs, y'all? I got to get used to not being able to hear y'all voices. <laughs> what, what, what does he have on his back? He got wings. Does he not? Why? Was this some kind of just an allegory or is this real? Or does Genesis 6 tell the truth? Does the book of Jude tell the truth? The angels. Does the word of God when it talks about the angels that left their first estate and sinned, huh? That God had chained in darkness. What does he have in his hand? It's a pine cone. Y'all ever heard of the pineal gland? Look at the Pope. He got the pine cone on his, his staff, right? Right? Y'all see it? Okay. What about Egypt? Though, right? I mean, we, we talk now, if y'all don't know, Anunnaki is out of uh, Iraq or Babylon, that whole area, Euphrates, all that. But now we're dealing with Egypt too. Look at what is in this giant's hand. Look at the size of him compared to the others. He got a serpent inside of some kind of weapon, right? What were these fallen angels doing while on the earth? What technology 
did they have? I want you to see something very interesting. Go to verse 21. It says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. That means what they were doing, the actions, was wicked. And there was enemies in their mind. Wait, 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 what? So now we got to go through some more scriptures on the mind. We got a lot. I'm, I'm going to tell you a lot to write down, but I do want you to go to 2 Corinthians with me, chapter 4. Let's go. Come on. If you want to write them down, I'll read them to you. No problem. Just save time. Amen. Time goes fast. Amen. Look at what it says in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. Oh, amen. Appreciate you, Audrey. Shout out to brother, minister Audrey. Okay, here we go. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You see that? They in the dark. But, but check this out. In whom the God, now there's a capital G. It's lowercase g. Referring to who? The devil. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, they gave over their authority. You know that, right? Adam gave his authority to Satan. Adam was supposed to rule the earth. When he did what he did, he made Satan the god of this earth. Uh, of not the earth, but the world. The worldly system, right? And had authority over Adam. But check this out. The god of this world had blinded the what? The minds of them which believe not. Lest what? The glorious light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them.